He gave her the confession. She went confession. She sat on the confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And, you know, how long has it been? The whole works. And she sat there with a big smile on her face. He says, now, what are your sins? She says, Father, I made love to 16 different men the last month. <laughs> Priest says, he says, for your penance, he says, I want you to go home and drink the juice of seven lemons. She says, well, will I get absolution? He says, no, but it'll take that smile off your face. <laughs> Murphy and the wife went to the circus. Went to the circus, and and then there's a sign on, on the way into the circus. You see, they, they, this this uh, mad cow, <laughs> by a bucking bronco, and they were offering they were offering fifty euro to anybody who could stay on the bucking bronco for more than sixty seconds. Murphy had a few drinks, you see, and they were going in. And Mrs. Murphy was reading the sign. She said, "Oh, look at that! She said, what? She said, look, he said, uh, fifty euro for anybody who can stay on, on the bucking bronco for more than sixty seconds." He says, "What? What? <laughs> what bucking bronco?" So they went in and the circus was going on, all the clowns and the bees acts and the lions and everything. And the next thing, the ringmaster around, he says, Now nah, this is our special competition. There's 50 euro for anybody who can stay on the bucking bronco for more than 60 seconds. So Murphy, hey, my man. <laughs> so Murphy got up, threw the jacket off, and he got up on the bucking bronco. Jeez, he stayed around for two and a half minutes. <laughs> the cow gave up in the end. <laughs> and Murphy got off, and they gave him the 50 euro. And Murphy sat down beside the wife, you see, and she's looking at him with a whole new bed. She's, she's really, really impressed with him. She has never seen this side to him before. She says, Murphy, she says, Murphy, where did you learn to stay on like that? And Murphy says, I guess, do you remember the time you had the hooping cough? It's a wee nun. It's a wee nun. And you always hear that when you tell a story. It's always a wee nun. It's never a big nun. They say, it's a wee drunk. It's never a big drunk. It's always a wee drunk. It's, it's a wee nun. And she went into a bar one day, and, and she had the whole, you know, the whole outfit on her. And she went into the bar, and she called the barman over. She says, "Excuse me a second. The barman over. She says, she says, "Yes, sister." She says, she says, "Could I have, could I have a large gin and tonic, please, for, for the mother superior's constipation?" <laughs> the barman, no bother. So I put up the large gin and tonic, and she paid for it. Next thing, she threw the tonic into the gin, and she drank it. She says, "Excuse me, could I have another large gin and tonic for the mother superior's constipation, please?" She, she put out another one. She done the same. Drank about five of them, five doubles, ten halves of gin and tonic. Call him over again. <laughs> Excuse me, could I, have, could I have another large gin and tonic for the most mo serious constipation, please? <laughs> the barber looked and said, Excuse me a second, sister. I know it's none of my businesses, but, but how's the fact that you're drinking all these gin and tonics going to cure the mother's serious constipation? <laughs> when she sees me tonight, she'll shine her down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, the two fellas met, they hadn't seen one another for a good while. They hadn't seen one another for a good while, they met in a bar, and one went over the other, he said, oh God, he says, he says, I haven't seen you in a long time, Riley. And, and, and Riley spoke very slow, he says, no, I've, uh, I've been away a good bit, you know, he says. And, uh, and he looked, that's right, Riley, he says, he says, that's amazing, you used to have a stoppage in your speech, he says, but, but no, you don't. No, that's right, he said, I went to a doctor, and he told me to speak slowly and that would cure it and I haven't had a stoppage since and it's great. <laughs> well, your master said, well, I am so delighted. That's absolutely brilliant. He said, no, chat away. Anything happening with you? And Randy said, well, I, uh, I nearly got married, you know. <laughs> what do you mean you nearly got married? Well, I was engaged to this girl and one night we were sitting in her house and, and uh, I, I looked over and, and her, her dog was lying there and he was scratching himself and, and I looked at her and I says, do you know what, whenever we're married, you'll be able to do that to me. And by God, she threw the ring back at me and threw me out. She didn't break off the engagement just because we said that. No, but you know the way I speak slowly. By the, by the time she looked around, the dog was licking his arse. A wee story about, about uh, the fella and his son were out in the garden, they were, you know, f at the garden and footing about in the clay and, and, and young, young, young fella's there, young Dan, you see. And Dan's footing about and he's, Dan's found a worm in the clay, you see, you know, a worm. And, he, 
and he's pulling away at the worm, you know, trying to get the worm out of his hole, and, he put, and, he put the, and the worm's all slippy and slidey, and, and uh, you know, and Daddy's laughing away at him, ah, you know, so eventually he got the worm out, a big long worm, you see, and, and uh, he says, look, Dad, I got him out, ah, he says, well done, son, he says, but he says, I'll, I'll, bet, you, I'll bet you a pound, he says, you, you'll not get him back in again. <laughs> well, Dan, he started to put the worm back in, but so the worm wouldn't either lead nor drive, like the worm did not want to go back. And no matter what, he couldn't get the worm back into the hole, and Daddy's like, I told you you wouldn't, not bet yet, Daddy. So young Dan left the worm and he went back into the house and he, he looked under the sink and he got one of those tins, you know that, that spray starch, <laughs> you know. And he came out and he got the worm and he straightened the worm out and then he sprayed it. <laughs> After about three seconds the worm was like a knitting needle, just <laughs> straight into the hole. He says, there you are daddy, and, and daddy was all, very good on that, very, very good, that's good. Mighty, <laughs> wonderful, there's your pound. So next morning, young Dan sitting eating the breakfast, eating the cereal. And Daddy came down the stairs and he tapped him on the head. He said, you're a good one. He says, there's your pound. He said, Daddy, you gave me a pound yesterday. He said, your mommy sent that down. <laughs> children are great. Children are great because children, uh, children are honest. That's what I like about children. They're honest, you know. And, and, and two wee kids talk one day and, and one kid says, I, I know how you can get everything you want. What do you mean? She said, where do you hear this? I learned this. He said, he says, when you go home, you say to your mommy or say to your daddy, all you have to do is just say out of the blue, just say, I know the whole truth. <laughs> They'll give you anything. Keep you quiet. But I don't know the whole, doesn't matter, you just say it to them. <laughs> so we went home that evening, he said, they try it. So I went into the house, and mommy was there, she was getting the dinner up. I mean, he says, mommy, she says, what, son? Mommy, I know the whole truth. <laughs> son. Son, look at, look at, there's 10 euro for yourself. Just keep it to yourself. Don't say a word to your father. <laughs> he waited for Daddy to come home from work that evening. And he met Daddy in the hall. And he asked, Son, how's it going? He said, Daddy, I know the whole truth. <laughs> Get the living room, man. There's 40, there's 40 euro. Don't say a word, don't say a word to anybody. Just keep that, you know. But I thought, this is great. So 50 euro, he started. He's heading out for school the next morning. He met the milk man coming in with the milk. He thought he'd try him. <laughs> he says, I know the whole truth. And the mock went, Oh, son, give your daddy a hug. <laughs> uh, three boys down the pub, you know, we were chatting, we were having a drink one night. The three boys down the pub, and one of them says, uh, the, the other two boys, he says, uh, two boys, he says, What did I tell you? He says, I think my wife was having an affair. What? I think she was having an affair with a plumber. What makes you think that? He says, he says, the other morning, he says, I found a wrench under the bed. He says, I said, but it's funny you should say that. He says, because I, I was convinced my wife was having an affair with, with a painter. He says, because one morning I found a paintbrush under the bed. And Murphy, he's there. He says, it's funny you should say that. He says, I think my wife's having an affair with a horse. Why is that? He says, the other morning he said, I found a jockey under the bed. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And it's funny how the innocent things turn out to be, you know, the worst things, don't they? Like, like the two girls, you know, they're married and, they, and then the two of them, they decided they'd have a wee girls' night out. And the, and the two of them, two of them headed out and they told the husband out just for a few drinks. You know, it's you know, just a wee bit of a session, you know. And the two of them, all the two of them got, got, got fairly drunk anyway. And on the way home, they were passing the graveyard, and then they, 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 they had to go to the toilet. They had to pee. So she, the graveyard was good and quiet. They hopped in over the wall, and the two of them, the two of them did what they had to do. And seeing all the excitement, they forgot now that, uh, that there wouldn't be much toilet paper about the graveyard. <laughs> so one of them, anyway, she used her knickers and that done, done the job and threw them away, naturally enough, and just finished. And the other one, she was, she was there, and then she was groping around behind her, and uh, she found a bit of a ribbon, and she used that anyway. That was grand. The next night, the two husbands were out in the pub and they were chatting. And then, uh, was it Sean? He says, uh, the two girls went out last night. Uh, did you notice anything strange? In it? She says, it's funny you mention that, Paddy. He says, he says when, when my aunt come home, she, she had no nigger. <laughs> well, what did I tell you? He says, when my aunt come home, he says, she had a ribbon <laughs> hanging out of her arse. And, and, and it said, you know, we'll never forget you from the boys in the fire brigade. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.